Hey everybody, this is Lloyd Irvin, aka The Grappling Renegade, and today I'm gonna put down my second video ever that I've ever done in my entire life. The first one being Lloyd Irvin's Mousetrap. You can, if you haven't seen it, go to YouTube and search for Lloyd Irvin's Mousetrap. But today, I'm gonna do something I promised everyone on my Facebook fan page at LloydIrvinFans.com. That's LloydIrvinFans.com. They've been asking me for the last decade plus to for me to show. Everyone's talking about my transitional systems. Everyone's talking about when I talk about drilling transitions, the micro transitions, the transitional systems, and I promised everyone on my Facebook page that I would finally put down a video and show you one of my transitional drilling systems for practicing transitional uh, exchanges and show you exactly what I mean by transitional exchanges. First, Everyone does moves, like every black belt, everybody, you go to YouTube, search grappling moves, BJJ moves, and everyone's an expert, everyone has a move that they're working on and they're showing, right? But what makes a move really work? Why have, do my metal chasers, you see our, you know, our submission rate's high, you know, see the guy always going submission, 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 and the transitional system is one of the main reasons that our submission rate is so high. And I'm gonna show you right now a submission that we do and how to drill it so you can take it, but it's, not, it's just not about this one submission. Today I'm gonna show you a variation of the clock choke, but I'm gonna go into the transitional. So right now I have my trusted partner here, Mr. Keenan Cornelius. Uh, for those that don't know, he, in 2012, he is the first person and the only person to ever win the double grand slam, winning the Pan American Championships, the Brazilian Nationals, the Europeans, and the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu World Championships at the Purple Belt level, uh, winning his weight division and the open division. How you doing today, Keenan? Great. How you doing, Mr. Very good. All right, so right now I'm going to just keep the camera on me. I'm going to show you the transitional system. So right now, let's... I'm gonna put Keenan on top of me in the mount. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna roll away and he's gonna arm bar me. So we roll away, he arm bars me, boom. He's back to mount. Come on this side from your cameraman. This time, I'm gonna roll away and he's going to choke me. So I roll away, he sits me back, and he chokes me, all right? This time, he's on my cross side. Watch this space right here. Watch this, very important, this space right here. I'm gonna turn away and watch what his left foot does. You'll see his left foot appear in this space here. So I roll away. Oh, you see it? Let's go one more time, one more time. Watch the space. I roll away. Oh, right there, all right? This time I'm gonna roll away. You're gonna see his foot come in and you're gonna see his left hand come around here and grab this lapel. All right, so. Let me do it by myself right now. So right now, there's a few things happening. When I turn away, one, watch, watch the space. As I turn away, space opens up, foot comes in. So I'm, I have to worry about this foot. I have to worry about this hand coming here, coming to get this lapel. I have to worry about this arm bar. As I turn, I have to worry about this arm bar. So, what happens is this, very rarely do any instructors work on what to do. Most people, they, you know, they do, the, they do the turn away, they do the turn away, whatever their technique is. So right now, when I turn away, I have to block this hook. So as I turn away, this elbow blocks here. So as I come up, there's no hook. While at the same time, as I turn away, I have to make sure that I protect his left hand from coming in. So one, my, my left ear is down, my hand is here, tight, and I put my hand here so that there's no space for him to come in with his left hand. And my left elbow is here. So if I start turning away, he goes to the arm bar, I'm automatically in the defense. So, come here real quick. So you're gonna go for the arm bar this time. I'm turning away, turning away. He goes over, he goes to the arm bar, I'm already in the defense, okay? So these three things you have to worry about and think about right away right off the gate, okay? Because these are the points that they catch you in the transitions, all right? All right, I know what you're thinking. What does Keenan arm barring me, taking my back, choking me, and putting his hook in have to do with the transitions that I'm talking about? Don't worry about it. If you're thinking that same thing, I'm gonna tie it all together in a second. 
Guys, make sure you take notes on the, this transitional drilling system. Write down all the little details because this is the kind of stuff that Master Lloyd shows us in our private drilling sessions when he's just working with the metal chasers individually on stuff. And this whole transitional system has made a huge, uh, huge difference in my game. It's really what caused caused my game to go from nothing to something. And now I'm, I'm catching guys in this, catching people in the transitions. It's what what is uh, allowing me to submit a lot of my opponents. Understanding this. The transitional switch is the transition from his hand going into my neck, his foot going into my hook, and his body going over from my arm bar. So what I'm going to show you right now, come here, Keenan. Oh, guard. I'm not going to go into how to open the guard or the actual technique per se. I want to show you how we work the transitional switch for the clock choke. So I open him up, double underneath, I stack him up. I come up here, whatever my technique is, and he goes over, most, right now freeze. So what happens most times, a person gets here now, they come over, he rolls out to all fours, come, come over here, and then they put the clock choke in and do whatever variation of the clock choke they're gonna do, whichever one they're gonna do, okay? But what happens is this, Stay right there. Right now, right now he's not gonna let me just pass the guard. His legs are popping down. We're in a fight here. We're in a fight. And I have to recognize when I've won the first part of the battle. So once I've won the first part of the battle, that means he's gonna go all to all fours. But Say for example, right now, this is the point at which I beat him. I know for a fact, with my, my, my chest pressure, everything, I'm gonna make him turn. Pay attention to this hand. Right now, as soon as he's, he's here, and I know he's over, this hand is gonna immediately go to this lapel. Come over top real quick here. And I'm gonna punch my fist down as far as possible. Here, underneath his throat, and my left hand's gonna come underneath here to get the grip. So before he hits all fours, I'm already walking out for the clock. Come back. I don't have time to let him hit there and then think I'm gonna make it here because his left leg's gonna be up and he's gonna be back in the guard or he's gonna, he's gonna sit on me, whatever, I'm gonna be turning. So the transition, the only part of the technique that I'm worried about and thinking about is my right hand switching to his right lapel and pushing it under his jaw. Because if, if I don't push it under his jaw, he'll get his chin down. So I'm here, here, boom, tight. Whatever, you, whatever, your, whatever your technique is, I'm here right now. So from here, I'm, I'm here and I'm pushing. Can you see here, Frank? Mm -hmm. I'm pushing, so right now he's not on all fours yet, but I'm already pushing this, so now I'm just feeding my left hand inside, so as, as he's walking, as he is getting to his knees, I'm already walking out. So, this is the drill. Here we go. This is not the drill. The drill's here. Notice how I'm here, slow motion. Watch my right hand once I switch. The transition is here. Here, here, here. Because, let me, let me do it myself now. Because now what happens is this. And ask yourself this. In your class, when you're taught to defend the clock choke, how many times have you drilled from the bottom 
I'm here. Right now, most times, you're both your hands are on the lapel, I mean, on their sleeve, you're pushing the face, you're here, you're pushing the face, you're pushing the face, and as soon as you're here, you're usually coming up. You're trying to do something. But how many times have you taken this lapel out of the play or protect your lapel? See, my job is this. It doesn't matter if he's a purple belt fighting a black belt. It doesn't matter if he's a brown belt fighting a black belt, 10 year black belt, it doesn't matter. If his transition to a submission is faster than his opponent's defense to that submission, they lose that part of the game. If I'm passing your guard and he's passing your guard or any of the students passing your guard and they leg drag you before you get to de defend it, they're going to be passed. They get three points, you know, match can keep on going, but you can, fit, you, you can come back and end up beating them. But in this scenario, if the transitional switch ends up being a submission and someone beats you to the submission, then you will lose. So, one more time, Kingdom. My bet that I'm placing is this, that I am going to, if I get here on you and I pass, and I'm here, freeze right there. Right here, I'm gonna bet that I've practiced this enough to beat this more than you have at this point. Protect, put your left hand here for me. That you've pr practiced to protect that. Ask yourself the question. When a person gets you here, do you go protect that lapel? Move your hand. And if you don't, and you go against one of my guys who, when we're here, we're not just pass and pass and pass. We're here, here, before you, you're even on your back. You're still in the guard conceptually, but I'm gonna bowl you over. I'm already switching. This hand goes here, and you, I'm already walking out when you're hitting. When you get to the turtle position or all four position, whatever you call it, you get to the all four position and now are looking to do whatever your technique is. When you hit the, hit the submission or hit the all four position, I'm already walking out with the submission. So that is what we call the transitional switch. So we have thousands and thousands and thousands of little tiny micro transitions just like that. And if you see, like I said, for a clock choke, think about it. Think about all the different movements that you do, all the submissions that you do, and think about where the catch is. So think about this as the catch. Where is the catch in your submission? And are you drilling the catch? Are you drilling the catch? Are you drilling the catch? I'll show you another variation. All right, guys, I'll tell you this much. I can't believe Master Lloyd's about to show you what, what he's about to show you. This is some really, some really top secret stuff. I'm gonna tell you like this. Most of my guys are gonna be upset and angry at me for showing you what I'm about to show you, but 97% of you aren't gonna practice it anyway, and the 3% that will, I wanna help people throughout the world. Check this out. If you have our Metal Chaser Drilling Secrets video, you see the technique where we work on taking the back. So nine times out of 10, when a person takes the back, this hand goes to the lapel, and you take the back, hook comes in, and you start working for the bone arrow choke, okay? My question to you is this. Does your school do that? Do you learn how to take a back like that and choke bone arrow? Yes or no? 90% of you are going to answer the question, yes. Well, what we do is, as we pass, if the elbow is up, we immediately bypass and go to the zikyo. And then the same thing, sit, take the back. Now, we practice this over and over and over, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of times. Because this is a scenario. If you ever turn your back to one of our guys and your elbow's up, when he's not going, they're not going for this lapel anymore. They're bypassing this lapel and they're already here. There is no defense because, I mean, you can just not tap and go to sleep, or you can not tap and maybe they, they don't have it all right or something, and they have to work on their skill set of that movement. But if your elbow's up and they, they catch, they're gonna be caught, and now you're gonna be in a full-blown Ezekiel choke. You can see, at this, re this weekend at the Atlanta Open, you um, caught somebody in this position, right? Yes, sir. If the elbow's up, when we pass, if I'm here and you, and you push off on me, got you. If you are here and are doing whatever you want to do with that elbow up, if you if you are going for my leg, leg lock, try to go for leg lock. If you're sitting for a leg lock, got you. No matter what you do, 
and our transitional sequence is pass, back take. There's two keys, elbows either up or elbows either down. If the elbow is down, we go traditional. If the elbow's up, we go Zikio. And it is red light, green light, and we're shooting it, shooting it, shooting it, shooting it, shooting it, both sides. Yet, whatever your competition gi is, you have to use that gi and practice. So like from here, he's here, my drill. So it reaches deep and my, I catch. And once it's on, it's on. Day's over. All right, so that is it for today. Hopefully, you got something out of it. And I got to tell you this, these micro transitions are super important. Micro transitions are probably one of my super secrets uh, when it comes to why my lower belts always end up when they get, to get an opportunity, a chance to go against other higher belts, why we win. Because it doesn't matter if I'm a blue belt and you're a brown belt. If I've practiced this drill 10,000 times, 5,000 times, pass your guard and get the Zikio. And I'm catching, I practice with my competition gi, it's one movement, one movement, and I'm in full blown Zikio. If I'm able to get past your guard and you turn out with your elbow up, I'm gonna catch it. You can be better than me later on. You can be, you, the brown belt can be better than the blue belt technically. And if they, they spar every day in class, they may be able to beat them every single day. But in that match, during that moment, they turn their back, their elbows up, they're caught, all right? So whatever submissions you have, think about what they are, put them down on paper, and think about the transition. Every single step, every single move that has to be applied to make them go through completion to their, to their caught. What do you have to say about that, Keenan? Um, I, I love the, the Ezekiel choke especially because, like you said, a lot of people, that no one's really drilling the defense as far as turning around. They don't know that the Ezekiel choke's coming. I've drilled it so many more times than they've drilled the defense. That right. it's, uh, whenever I, I've hit the Ezekiel probably like 20 or so times in 2012 season, and every time, just once I catch it, it's over. It's, 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 it's like, you have to be kidding me. It's like simple, super yeah, simple, right? Yeah, people just don't even realize the, 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 the opening's there because they don't drill that kind of defense, and it's just knowledge, you know? They, they just don't have that specific knowledge in that situation. And what I've done is I've watched video, I watch film, I understand the game, and I've found ways to expose all the different holes that are just like that. So I use the Ezekiel on the back take, just for example, because I'm sure you're familiar with it. I'm sure that today in class, if you're watching this, if you if you pass my guard and they turn away, watch, is elbow up or elbow's down? If the elbow's up and you drill what I'm talking about, you will increase your Ezekiel submission rate by 300, 400, 500%. From 2009 to 2012 ish, we probably have 150, 140, 150 uh, Zikio finishes just from that, just from this whole concept, okay? So, but we also have other positions and other transitions like this in all the positions. And that is what my transitional game is about. That's what my transitional sequence is about. And it's about understanding what the holes are, where the holes are in the Jiu Jitsu, what the holes are in uh, BJJ. Totally. So right now, just if you if you're trying to open your mind, if in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, a person does X to you, and your job is to defend the right lapel, my goal is like, hmm, how can we can we how can we finish them with the left lapel, or how can we finish them with no lapel? All right. So if everyone in Jiu Jitsu is focusing on defending the right lapel, how can we finish with the left lapel? How can we finish with no lapel? And those are the type of things I'm looking for, and I've been doing that all my entire life and figure out what those things are, putting those into a drilling system. And like I said, the proof is in the pudding for my guys. So hopefully this transitional video has helped you a little bit, um, added to your game, think about what I'm telling you and hope you enjoyed it. All right, peace.